Punaweba. The purpose was to verify, to document, and to establish hypotheses that this could be a link in the Exodus pathway. Based on his analysis of documentary evidence, Leonard Muller had long suspected the Aqaba coast as the probable location of the Red Sea crossing. In 1997, he heard reports from other divers who claimed to have found unusual coral structures, some resembling the shapes of chariot wheels. Moeller decided to investigate these claims for himself. The first time I was diving there, of course, we were then looking for possible artifacts. And I had seen on some pictures what we could look for. I was skeptical and excited because if this is the place for the crossing, then of course, that's, that's a big thing. So I was excited about that. But I was also skeptical because 3,500 years, that's a long time. But if Nueva is the crossing site, then of course you would expect to find remains of the Egyptian army. Like others who had explored Nueva before him, Moeller immediately recognized the difficulty of this search. If we assume that a number of artifacts were spread out on the seabed, sooner or later corals would start to grow on them. And of course, if you have a number of layers or coral growing on something, it's very hard to distinguish the structure that was there from the very beginning. Though the coral complicates any search here, it may have been instrumental in preserving the shapes of ancient artifacts. For coral is a living organism that will not begin to grow on a foundation of sand or silt. Instead, it must first attach itself to a solid object where it will sometimes conform to the shape of its host. So for instance, if it would grow on a wooden artifact, the wood would normally disappear in the seawaters after a time. But if you have corals growing on the wooden artifact, uh, the coral could have the shape of the wooden artifact. And then the corals would consume the wooden material over periods of time, but still keep the shape of the wooden artifacts. During the course of his explorations, Moller observed that the pattern of coral growth at Nueva differed from other parts of the Gulf. Unlike the coral at the northern and southern ends of Aqaba, which often forms large, dense reefs, some covering many acres, the formations at Nueva Beach are generally smaller and scattered randomly across the sea floor. Divers familiar with the area have compared the distribution of coral here to a junkyard and the aftermath of a disaster. This description is fitting, and among the strange formations in these waters, many display features indicative of human engineering. When we dive and when we film at the Noveba location, we look for certain structures, and you try to look for 90 degree angles or circular objects, wheel-like structures. So that is what you scan for, so to speak, when you dive. There are situations where you see something that looks like an axle, a hub, something that looks like a wheel, and you say to yourself, this is not a coral reef, this is a coral growth on an artifact. And that is what's different to me when I compare corals at other locations around the world. Since the earliest explorations at Nueva, one distinctive type of formation has often been identified on the sea floor. A slender, table-like structure, sometimes standing on end, with a coral-encrusted base, a straight shaft, and a circular top. It's a 90-degree angle, a right angle, between something that looks like an axle and the wheel. And you can see this in different varieties, and it looks very different from normal coral growth. And uh, it is like a man-made structure with a coral growth on it.
While most of the possible artifacts found off the coast of Nueva are covered with coral, one significant discovery was not. There is one find at uh, the Nueva location that is of great interest, and that is the gilded wheel. It is a wooden basic structure of the wheel and is covered with gold or electrum. It's a mixture of silver and gold. And corals have not been able to grow on it. It's been very well preserved. Although it's very fragile, it seems like the wooden content has been dissolved. So I mean, you could break it if you would try to remove it. After its discovery, the fragile wheel-shaped veneer was photographed then left in place on the sea floor. Later analysis revealed that its dimensions and design resembled four spoke chariot wheels painted on an 18th dynasty tomb wall near the biblical date of the Exodus. After reviewing photographic evidence and making several dives of his own, Moeller concluded that a more systematic investigation of the Nueva seafloor was warranted. He realized that the limited diving time afforded by scuba equipment would never allow an extensive search of the area. A higher level of technology was necessary, and in the spring of 2000, the Discovery Media team lowered a robotic camera into these waters for the first time. This has never been done. No one has been in the area at all with a remote control camera. Controlled from the ship, the camera was maneuvered across the seafloor, transmitting video images for study and evaluation. We have been down to some 80, 90 meters, so we can go deeper down that we can't do with ordinary diving, and we can be down as long as we like. As in his previous searches at Nueva, Moeller scrutinized the coral for specific shapes. You can see that because it's a 90 degree angle, you see at the seabed here, there are some structures that are just a little bit above the surface of the seabed. They have a cross-like appearance, it's 90 degree angles, and there's a hole in the middle. So the hub would be here? Possibly a hub there, yeah. And the, the wheel would be in a circle around. This would be the rim of the wheel here? Yeah. Okay. So this could be a spoke here, possibly? Yeah, possibly. possibly a spoke? Yeah. And what, what would the diameter of that rim be? Yeah, that's a good question, but we would expect it to be about one meter, about three feet wide right. okay. in diameter. The robotic camera's survey revealed many shapes and objects familiar to Moeller, including coral formations with right angles, arches, disks, and straight shafts fused into larger masses that had the appearance of twisted wreckage. Now, when we have been able to go back and forth with a remote control camera, we can repeatedly see that these strange structures we are looking for are there, not at one place, but you see them again and again and again. And this could be the outer rim of a wheel. Like the that. abundance of these unusual yeah. coral structures was even more apparent when tapes of the expedition were carefully scrutinized during the months following the search at Nueva. Perhaps have a wheel here, standing on the seabed. When you sit and look at these films that has been taken by the remote camera, you see all these strange artifacts or coral growth on some artifacts or structures that appear repeatedly time after time at different locations at this spot. And um, you can sit there and think, well, what is this? This doesn't look like normal coral growth. And it is amazing to see that so many things and such large areas down there that are like a man-made structure.
while the robotic camera logged hours of video documentation. Vivica Pontien and other divers on a second research vessel used metal detectors to evaluate specific structures on the sea floor. Pontien and her colleagues realized that the wheels of many Egyptian chariots were often reinforced with bronze. They hoped to find evidence of the metal encrusted in coral. A scan of this formation indicated a circular metallic pattern around its edge, perhaps evidence of the broken rim of a chariot wheel. Other coral formations examined also contained fragments of metal. Vivica Pontien's interest in this research was heightened by a discovery she had made three years earlier, eight miles due east of the Nueva Peninsula. During her stay in Saudi Arabia, Pontien not only searched for Mount Sinai, she also made several dives in an attempt to document evidence of the Egyptian army on the Saudi side of the Gulf. And the Bible tells that Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore after they came across. So I figured there must be some stuff on the Saudi side. At one spot there is like a very shallow sort of land tongue going out in a straight angle towards Nueva. You could tell it by the shift of the color of the water. It's, it, you could see how it was turquoise far out, you know. So I thought this would be interesting for exploration. So we did some dives near to that. The scattered irregular coral formations on the Saudi side of Aqaba resemble those previously found off the Nueva Peninsula. In the midst of them, Pan Chien photographed this circular object attached to what appears to have been a broken axle or hub. This discovery was significant for two reasons. Pontien had documented the coral-encrusted form of a wheel with dimensions similar to ancient Egyptian artifacts directly across from the proposed Nueva crossing site. Her find also provided independent confirmation of earlier evidence establishing wheel-like formations on both coasts of the Red Sea in accordance with descriptions in the biblical record. And the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army, and he made the wheels of their chariots come off. A common question is, why didn't you bring up artifacts? And there are several answers to that. The best thing to do when you find something is just to keep it in position, document it, but keep it in position. It's very easy to destroy anything. And the other thing, it's illegal to remove artifacts, but also you're not allowed to bring up any corals from the Red Sea. While Egyptian environmental laws prohibit removal of any coral for scientific dating and analysis, photographic evidence may provide a link to the time of the exodus. Scholars have recognized that